Welcome back ladies and gentlemen, Michael here and today is about the question of which of the Ubuntu editions is the better or smart choice for whom? LTS versus STS. Let's give it a start. First of all, let's take a look at which releases these are and what the motivation behind them is at Canonical as the Ubuntu distributor. The Ubuntu desktop appears in two versions at the same time. A version with long-term care, also known as LTS. A new release of this version appears every two years and each LTS version receives five years of LTS and then another five years can be added via the Ubuntu Pro subscription. So that a Ubuntu LTS version gets up to 10 years of security updates. This is already an announcement within the Linux distros, but also very clearly towards Windows and Mac OS. In addition to the LTS version, there is also the STS version, also called as Interims version. STS stands for Short Term Support. Here they act as the intermediate version that come between the LTS versions. In general, an Ubuntu version is released every six months. The April edition with the even numbered year always becomes the LTS version. There are always three STS versions between the LTS version. The aim of the STS version is to try out or introduce new technologies in Ubuntu. The company behind Ubuntu is canonical and they offer professional Linux solutions including the Ubuntu desktop. That's close to the free Ubuntu desktop solution we all familiar with. But there are also paid support options for corporate customers and for companies it's not just about money but also about reliability and stability. For this reason Canonical does not build new technologies into the LTS versions but into the STS versions. These changes are tested there with the aim to bringing them to stable market maturity by the next LTS version. This does not mean that new software is unstable per se, but that it is rather that the coordination of the various packages is optimized in order to cushion unknown errors in the LTS as far as possible. This leads us straight to the next chapter in which we look at the target groups. But before that we dare a comparison to Windows where there are also different editions. For business customers Microsoft also offers a version of Windows, for example Windows 10 or 11 Enterprise, which is supplied with security patches as long as possible. There aren't that many feature updates in the Enterprise Edition. The Home Edition of Windows, on the other hand, is also regularly supplied or offered with feature updates. In this way, home users are offered new features and corporate customer systems with security updates that remain unchanged for as long as possible. Canonical adapts this in similar fashion to the Ubuntu LTS and STS releases. We've noticed that there is a long-term maintenance release of Ubuntu at which is about the greatest possibility stability and reliability. On the other hand, there is also a topic about new technologies and innovations rather than the longest possible support periods. One target group needs a largely unchanged system and only wants to deal with security gaps. The other target group would like to receive the latest programs and features as soon as possible. The first group uses the LTS version, the second group uses the STS version. You should think so at first glance. However, everyone who is heading off to use the STS versions permanently should consider that they only receive 9 months of maintenance and they do have to switch to the following version at latest after the end of the support of the existing STS version. As a rule of thumb, you could say that the interims version are upgraded twice a year whereas the LTS version are upgradable every 2 years. Although the upgrades at Ubuntu run uncomplicated and smooth these days, this process is nevertheless a potential source of danger that could affect the system and its availability. In other words, if you always want to accept little maintenance effort, the LTS versions are definitely a good choice. If you always want the latest apps and features in connection with Ubuntu quality, the STS or interims version called might be interest for you. But as we see in the following section, there is also the possibility of always getting the latest apps for LTS versions. Although it sounds like a contrast at first glance, there are options with an LTS version to run the preferred apps to use in a newer version than it was offered in the standard repositories. With Ubuntu there is the possibility to include PPA package sources. PPA stands for Personal Package Archive. These are package sources that are often provided by software projects or by free developers. 
The advantage is that it is integrated in a system and brings the latest and greatest version of your app. It is offered directly by the developer. The disadvantage or danger of PPA is that you have to trust the publisher or developer because once the PPA is integrated and the software is obtained from it, it is installed with root rights. Therefore, Kelly, if you install software via PPA, there is a possible danger that your system could be compromised since the quality assurance level of a distro package maintainer will be undermined. Package maintainers are people who build the software packages for a distribution. For example, compile them and take care of the provisioning of patches. They have also the possibility to deactivate some functions in software, for example, collecting diagnostic data. This could be interesting for a developer, but maybe not for a package builder or for you as casual user. Sounds confusing and dramatic, but the real problem is the same as with other operating systems such as Windows, macOS or Android. If you install software from a dubious source, it could be dangerous. In my experience, this can also be very positive if only selective PPAs from reputable developers or projects are included. I'm thinking, for example, here of the PPA from KeePass XC or Nextcloud developers. If you don't like PPA, you can also use software containers. By default, Ubuntu offers Canonical's own Snap solution. However, the Snap alternative flatback could also be included and used under Ubuntu. In most cases, newer apps and packages are also available than in the LTS package sources. Likewise, the common Linux distros have now integrated Flatpak into Update Manager. If it looks for updates, there will also be a check for Flatpak apps to update. And the most of them also offer to update Flatpak apps. The third container solution is AppImage. This downloads a Finnish software image that can be run without installation. The advantage is obvious. It does not require any installation. The disadvantage is that the availability of software as app image is not as wide and updating is not automatic as with Flatpak or Snap via an update manager. In the case of a new version, you have to download the new image and run it. In the event of an error, you can quickly go back to the previous version. But the manual effort with app image is the highest for the three container solutions. So we can summarize that it is also possible with an LTS version to selectively import and use apps in the latest version. The solution here are either PPA or a container solution such as Snap, Flatpak or AppImage. The last option will probably appeal to very few would be to compile the new version of your program by yourself every time, but that would go beyond the scope and is only mentioned here for the sake of completeness. Canonical recommends the LTS versions for all users. These have an outstanding stability compared to the STS versions. This does not mean that the STS versions are unstable as already mentioned. But the package tuning in the STS versions is not at the same high level as it in the LTS version is. The higher the fine tune of the package, the lower the risk of running into error situations. I recommend the LTS versions if you Attach great importance to long support periods for your operating system. Maximum possible stability is very important to you. Generally want to put little maintenance into operating system. You depend on a system and its reliable operation. You are self-employed or planning to introduce Ubuntu in your company. I recommend the STS version if you attach great importance to the newest possible kernel version drivers and apps. You always want the latest from the new. You are a developer who always needs the latest interfaces. You are a technology enthusiast and always stay in the innovation team. You live with minor bugs and can fix them if necessary. You fear that some packages from the Universe Multiverse repository are too old on the LTS side and prefer the newest and freshest version from the STS release. In some cases, the advantages of one version can also be seen as the disadvantages of the other. In order to draw the boat to Windows again, if you have previously taken all feature updates from Windows and you want to keep that course, the STS versions are probably more your thing. If you don't want to stick to the future update interval and want more peace of mind, then LTS should be your port of destination. Before we come to the conclusion, two or three points of poor understanding. 
The comparison was limited to the Ubuntu desktop edition that comes with GNOME Shell and did not include the flavors such as Kubuntu or Xubuntu. The flavors are not primarily managed by Canonical, but by voluntary developers. Although these flavors also appear as LTS and STS version, the LTS period is limited to three years, while the STS versions are comparable to the regular Ubuntu versions. Ubuntu Pro that brings extended support with security updates after the end of the five years of LTS is not available for the flavor LTS versions. So, if you are keen to the flavors, STS versions are supported for nine months and LTS versions for three years. With Ubuntu, the STS versions are also served for nine months and the LTS versions five years and you have the possibility to subscribe to Ubuntu Pro to receive five more years security updates. Let's come to my conclusion. I am a LTS user. For me, the STS versions have never been as an option because I have never been able to see the real benefit in it for me. I understand the technical merits of the new apps and such, but I had decided that Ubuntu LTS with PPA and Flatpak would suit my purpose better than STS. I get exactly what I want, stable platform with cutting edge apps. I'm aware that PPAs could cause problems with upgrades, which Wirepoint is out here. With Flatpak, you are even better protected. But I haven't encountered any unsolvable problems when upgrading an LTS version with PPAs. But that could also be because I like to let months go before I do the upgrade. So I'm not the first to jump to a new version, but give the story time until the first issues are fixed. However, I can also understand those who would like to have the latest of the new and are willing to either take some risk or fix a bug or two to get it. That's perfectly fine for me and I understand some people prefer innovation. For some made it's best to have a second computer. If you don't have one, maybe virtual machines are a possible solution for you. And if not, then just take the STS version if your fingers are itching and LTS is too boring for you. Everything okay from my point of view. So at the end, a brief summary. If you want to work with the system, if it should be reliable and generally require little maintenance, then use LTS. If you always want to use the latest software and apps on your system and can live with minor problems after an upgrade, then take the STS. What will you choose? Please write your opinion about in the comments. I'm already very excited about that. If you liked the video, now is the right time for a free channel subscription. Then you won't miss anything anymore and it's good for my channel too. Thanks. Before I go, I would like to say a big thank to all of my supporters. Stay healthy, continue to take good care of yourself and see you next time. Until then, good day ladies and gentlemen. Bye bye.